Thanks for your interest today in attestation using our crypto authentication device, the ATECC608A. This is part two of the attestation presentation covering Secure Download Firmware Upgrade, Secure DFU for short. Secure DFU, as well as Secure Boot, fall under the category of attestation, the affirmation that something is correct, true, or genuine. Secure DFU assures the code being sent to update the system is genuine. Secure boot assures only genuine code is executed on startup of the system. There can also be runtime attestation. This is where code is checked on the fly while the system is operating to make sure no code was tampered with. Local attestation could be a programmed periodic check of the code. A bit more secure than that would be a remote attestation, where a remote authority asks for a particular section of code to be hashed, possibly signed, and sent for authentication. This presentation covers secure DFU only. Please see part one for the description of secure boot. Asymmetric cryptography is often used for secure DFU. Let's discuss the preparation of the new firmware to be sent to the field. We'll leave encryption alone for now and discuss it at the end. We begin with the new application image and a set of keys authenticated in the same chain of trust as the field units. This is typically an OEM intermediate key pair whose public key is assured by a certificate from the OEM root authority. Let's call these keys the manufacturer's keys and use MFG for short. The sequence of events is as follows. A digest of the new application image is created by hashing it. This digest is signed by the manufacturer's private key, hopefully hidden and protected by hardware in the OEM signer. The resultant digital signature, along with the new application image, is placed in the payload, a digital envelope to be eventually sent to all the devices in the field. The manufacturer's public key is assured by a certificate from the root authority. This public key, along with its certificate from the root authority, is also placed into the payload. This will be needed in the future to verify the signature of the application image. The payload is then broadcast to the field. Remember when I said we were sending the new application image in the clear to keep this example simple? We could have added an extra step and encrypted the image. But remember, this entire payload will be, should be, sent as an authenticated message when it's broadcast to the field. It can be encrypted at that point, or it could be encrypted here and just sent as an authenticated message later. Or if you really took the idea of defense in depth to heart, you could encrypt both here and when you send it as a message. Or maybe you just don't consider the contents of this payload is a secret and you never encrypt at all. It's entirely up to you. Now let's consider what happens after the payload arrives at a device in the field. When this device was manufactured, the root authority's public key was placed into it under the relative secure circumstances of the production line. Public keys are not considered secrets, but all authentications will rely on this key so it must be protected from overwrite. The sequence of events goes something like this. The payload arrives from the OEM, somehow. Exactly how will depend on your ecosystem. The signature in the manufacturer's certificate is verified using the root authority's public key. If this verify fails, the entire message is rejected and no programming occurs. If it passes, we know we can trust the manufacturer's public key and the new code is hashed creating a digest, which will be used to verify the signature. The signature is verified using this digest and the manufacturer's public key. If this verify passes, the payload is accepted as genuine and the new image is accepted by the field unit. Let's explore how we would use symmetric cryptography, also known as symmetric key, for secure DFU. Again, we will discuss the preparation of the new firmware to be sent to the field. We'll leave encryption out of it again. We begin with the new application image and an ecosystem universal parent key. The security of the entire ecosystem will rely on this key, so it must remain persistently secure. This is the fundamental weakness of this method. If you can ensure the security of the parent key, everything's great. If you can't, the entire ecosystem is compromised. Because of this, this method should only be used when an OEM has complete control over their entire ecosystem. 
If devices in this ecosystem need to interoperate with devices from other companies, symmetric key is a very poor choice. Security of the key is paramount. The secret of this key cannot be shared. The sequence of events is as follows. The new application image is hashed with the parent key inside a secure element. The resulting Mac and the new image are placed in the payload and broadcast to the field. Everything I said previously about encryption is still true. This payload must be sent as an authenticated message. It can be encrypted now, or it can be encrypted at the time of sending, or both, or neither. It's all your choice. Now let's consider what happens after the payload arrives at a device in the field. When this device was manufactured, the parent key was placed into it under the relative secure circumstances of the production line. The sequence of events goes something like this. The payload arrives from the OEM somehow. Again, this will depend on your ecosystem. The new application image is hashed with the parent key, creating a digest which should match the Mac in the payload. The reproduced Mac is compared to the Mac from the payload. If it matches, the new application image is accepted and programmed into the field unit. Thanks for your time today. We appreciate your interest in the subject. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to your microchip technical support professional. Thanks again.